I'm going down to the bottom of this thing to show you everything. This is the bottom board. Uh, it's kind of a nice design. You'll notice when the, the hive sits on this, it's a 3 8 opening. But there's also a 3 quarter inch opening if you put the hive on this side. It's kind of a cool design. So you can have a, a quite a wide opening with the beehive sitting there. And for a high summer, that's quite nice. A lot of air can get in. But if it's a younger colony or uh, if it's a colder time, then that's certainly thick enough to live it in and out. And you can even then, uh, you've always got some kind of entrance reducer handy. This comes with the kit when you buy the kit. Uh, you can have a very small opening, single B, two B opening, a larger opening, or no, no reducer. I often will cut these in half and just have them around, but uh, they can easily go in front and uh, help. This is for helping the bee to not be invaded, or for helping the bee to keep warm. Bees, curiously enough, even though they're cold-blooded, they keep their hive at 95 degrees, very close to our temperature, and they're growing larvae under that condition. They need to keep the larvae warm, even in the winter. And apparently, they don't, they don't just have warm bodies all the time. They have warm bodies when they need to, and they burn honey in the hive to create heat. What a mystery. Now, my little list. I don't want to miss anything, but I also don't want to miss your questions. If you have something along the way, please don't hesitate. So I've got a list here. Queen excluder, starter kit, feeding, marked or clipped queens, replacement queens, Stopping swarms, entrance feeders. So of that list, I've only talked about entrance feeders. I've got a lot. Where are we going? Uh, any questions before I proceed? Yes, please. Uh, when you put the uh, empty super on top, or do I have to feed yes. them the honey? Do you just put the honey into molds? Uh, so a jar of any kind that's not taller than your, you could put this empty kind of box on and have any kind of quart jar, but. If you have pint jars, this is enough. Upside down on a Tupperware, but then of course nothing comes out. So maybe a toothpick under one side. And uh, it starts to flow rather slowly, but you don't want it to flow without anybody noticing. So before you leave, you uh, get a little on your fingers and make a little trail to the opening. Maybe drop some down in the opening. So down below they'll realize what's happening. They, they won't let it just leak up there for hours without noticing. So as you leave, the first bees are starting to lick the honey on the edge that you left them. And you know that when, when you're gone in that night, they will be up there taking the honey out of that jar. Maybe one toothpick isn't enough. If it's thick honey, this is quite thin, so that would be enough. But uh, maybe two toothpicks, you can tell. Look now and then and see. Question. How do you know when to stop feeding them? Yeah. Uh, if it's a brand new colony that you bought, uh, called a package, B, you buy package bees. It's kind of sad. You buy a box, screen box of random bees. They have at the bee yard, which is kind of a sad place, but you should go. <laughs> Our money supports these things. I buy package bees. I make myself feel better because I, I make it be that, I make it be that I'm uh, rescuing bees. So I put the money toward their operation. I don't know that they could do it any better. If they charge more, of course, they could do better, but then nobody would buy them. It's really hard to blame anybody for it. Anyway, package bees are random bees that they have sprayed with hoses and done through funnels, and they've dumped certain numbers of pounds of random bees in, in boxes with screens. So they've all lost their colony. And they weren't prepared to go anywhere. They were just living whatever they were doing that day. And so they haven't filled up with honey like they would have if they were swarming. If a bee is going to swarm a hive, they're going to fill up with honey because they know they're going to need to make wax wherever they go. But these random bees didn't know that, and so they're stuck in this box. Uh, they need to be fed immediately. So the bee uh, yard will put in a can of sugar syrup or corn syrup 
leaking. And so the bees will have that to eat on the way uh, to you. And then they'll also take a queen from their laboratory that they made, and they'll put her in a little case. I happen to have a queen cage because just a couple weeks ago I, I purchased this. What I'm talking about, I purchased. The queen is in this little cage, and there's a, maybe an attendant or two with her in there. Uh, keep her company. But uh, on this end is a cork, and under the cork is a candy. And so when I get the package in my possession and I dump the bees in there, I have already secured her to a frame with a piece of wire, down like this. And so when I dump the bees in, they smell that she's in there and they don't leave. So, by the way, uh, they have lost their queen and they've been put in this package. And then they've been given this new queen in the transit between the yard and my house. And so over the day or two or three, uh, they have come to terms with the fact that they have lost everything. But there is the queen next to me that uh, is obviously a queen. So over the three days, they start to realize, you know, she is my hope. I have to bond myself to her. So by the time you get them, they've had a little time to bond, but not enough, apparently. So uh, you take off the cork, a little teeny cork, and expose the candy. And then when the other bees are in there, it's like a little time-release capsule. The bees are eating the candy, and time is going by. And when they finally break through and let her out, they won't uh, kill her as an intruding queen. They will embrace her as their queen because enough time has passed, and they've given up hope of their old hive. It's ingenious how it works, but it's also very sad. So feeding them is necessary. They don't have any, <coughs> any resources. You must feed the new package bees immediately because they did not come ready for a new hive. So feed uh, honey and watch it and honey and watch it. So maybe a pint or two. And then after maybe a few days of feeding, you can risk uh, looking down in and seeing what's their progress down here. The honey you give them is directly going into making honey comb. They're turning that honey into wax in order that the queen can lay eggs and then build the colony. So, 11 o'clock. So, uh, after you check the frame or two, you can tell they're, they're doing well, the queen, must be, the queen must be there, everything must be fine. You feed them until maybe two or three combs are made. And then you can be confident they the spring is so high right now, I don't have to worry any longer. Feed them enough to see that they've made some comb so they can then gather their own food. That's the, that's the answer to that question. Feed them enough until you see they've made some comb. And, you know, beekeeping isn't a, a science, it's an art. So uh, this year you, you feed them this much, this year you feed them that much, and over time you realize I fed them too much that year, I didn't feed them enough this year. So. If it's a swarm you got out of the tree, you don't have to feed them as much because they are full of honey, but still, you, it's nice to give them some reassurance that they have found a nice hole. And feeding them honey is a nice way of doing it. If you start with a new honey, yes. how does that reduce the amount of honey you need to give them? So, you can also buy a nuke, uh, short for nucleus, and uh, in Texas, the sale of nukes is four frames. So you buy four frames of working bees, which is much more humane in a way, usually much more expensive. And when they arrive, you trust and you find that the bee supplier has given you one frame of honey and one frame of brood. So you see uh, larva capped and uncapped, capped meaning they're pupas. And you see, I. I've gotten a good purchase, but it could be a bad supplier has given you empty frames. You have to really look, because just because they're frames doesn't mean there's anything in them. Uh, they still, it's nice to give them a little honey, just as a welcome home kind of a gift. You don't really have to, of course, because they have a place to put the stores that they're bringing in, and when you buy them, it is usually springtime. But it's, it's nice to let them know there's something special about this place. This man is very nice, or this beekeeper is very nice. And so I like to feed them.